So the first rock and roll song. Rock 88. Sit, sit down, kids. Let me tell you a story. A lot of people think that Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and the Comets was the first rock and roll song. It's pretty close. That song was recorded in 1954. I'm talking about something that happened in 1951. A couple of famous people that are in this song. So the first rock and roll song was actually a song called Rocket 88 by Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats. And let's just kind of set the stage a little bit and let's play 30 seconds of it. And then we can get into kind of telling the story of how this song came about. You've heard of jalopies, you've heard the noise they make But let me introduce my new Rocket 88 Yes, it's straight, just one way Everybody likes my Rocket 88 Baby, we'll ride in style, moving all along Man, that song is swinging yeah. couple things of how that song started So, Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats was a band that Ike Turner was actually the leader of. Yeah. And they said that Ike Turner, that the band was playing a gig in Greenville, Mississippi. And as they were driving back to uh, back home, they saw a whole bunch of cars on the side of a road outside of a juke joint. And they pulled over and they went in and B.B. King was playing on the stage. And Ike Turner and B.B. King had been friends. So B.B. King's like, hey, man, what's going on? Why don't you guys all come on up and play with me? They played one song, and I, according to Ike Turner, he said they blew it away. Um, I'm sure they did. Yeah. And B.B. King was like, man, you guys got to make a record. You guys got to record something. And Ike Turner said, okay, cool. We have no idea how to do that. We don't know what it means to record music. And B.B. King said, well, I got a guy. You know, I'll put you in contact with Sam Phillips. Mm -hmm. oh. So Sam Phillips, they, they, they hook up, they connect, and the band decides they're going to drive up to Memphis to record. And they're driving up, and they said that they had, like, seven guys piled in one car. They had the upright bass wrapped up in a tarp on the roof of the car. And as they were driving, they started just shooting the shit, saying, like, oh, man, who could see, like, the most... Like, they're talking about the cars that are passing them on the road. And they say, hey, man, I bet you I could see more Fords than you. Oh, yeah, well, I bet you I could see more Chevrolets. And somebody goes, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to see an Oldsmobile Rocket 88. Yeah. Which is the first that's, muscle that's car. Said. Ike was like, you're not going to see many Rocket 88s. Yeah. And then they start driving, and they're like, well, wait, we're driving up to record. What are we going to record? <laughs> yeah. And then they just start kind of passing lyrics around, and this conversation they were having about the cars becomes into... A song? Yeah. Like, oh, they're talking... Well, in the lyric that we just heard, he says, like, you know, Jalopies and Rocket 88. And we're like, mm. what rhymes with that? What rhymes with that? Yeah. But then when they get to Sun Records, they said they got pulled over by the cops when they were driving there. Yeah. Hard to and, believe. And, Hard right, to believe. right, right, right. In Memphis? No. Right. And then when they pull up outside, they're unloading all their gear, and somebody had dropped the guitar amp, and it cracked. And while Ike Turner and the band was like, well, we just blew yeah. our shot, yeah. Sam Phillips, being the sound guy he is, went and grabbed a bunch of wadded up paper. Some people say it was some napkins from a diner next door. Some people say it was a brown paper bag that he had, and he stuffed it into the amp. And it created this fuzzy, distorted sound that became really famous. And if you hear that sound, if you go back and listen to that song, and then you go listen to I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Stones, it's the same sound. The same buzz. It, or yeah. uh, You Really Got Me by the Kinks, it's the same sound. Did they do the same thing? They, 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 they modeled they, it after that song. They busted it open the speaker. And I don't know if they did that. I don't know if they, maybe <laughs> I'm they sure did the Stones had a lot more fun breaking their amplifier than, uh, right. than they did. Right. Well, they got a better story. But when you were playing that, I was sitting here listening to it with my, my hands over my headphones so I could hear that buzz. That, the fuzz. The fuzz. It's totally noticeable. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, and it was just an accident that they just stumbled upon. So that you'll say that is the first distortion ever used in a song mm -hmm. absolutely man i remember my friend chris he would do that as a kid bring broken speakers and then put newspaper in them and then some way hook a guitar up to it and it'd yeah. be like this you could, amplifier you get that fam that vibration because yeah. the speaker would just move around you had to get it to stop i remember him doing that also chris heidler smart guy it was just just another example of sam phillips just being a master of <laughs> just being a, just, manipulating sound yeah. He, he just he, he just heard sound everywhere. He was just 